Imagine waking up tomorrow morning and checking your phone. Instead of the usual chaos of global news, every headline reads the same thing. World peace declared, all nations sign. Universal peace treaty. Sounds impossible, right? But what if it actually happened? What would our world look like in the first 24 hours, the first month and beyond? Today we're diving into this fascinating thought experiment. We'll explore the immediate chaos, the unexpected consequences, and the mind-bending changes that would ripple across every aspect of human civilization. From economics to psychology, from technology to daily life, nothing would remain the same. Picture this. It's 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time when the announcement breaks simultaneously across every major news network on Earth. The leaders of all 195 UN member nations appear in a coordinated broadcast, signing what historians would later call the Global Peace Accord. But here's where things get interesting and a bit chaotic. Within the first hour, global stock markets would experience what economists call unprecedented volatility. Defense contractors like Lockheed Martin and BAE Systems would see their shares plummet by 40 to 60%. Meanwhile, renewable energy companies, infrastructure firms, and education technology stocks would skyrocket. The irony? The very announcement of peace would initially create economic panic. Millions of jobs tied to military production, defense research, and security services would suddenly become uncertain. Social media would explode with a mixture of celebration, skepticism, and conspiracy theories. The hashtag Docker World Peace Day would trend globally within minutes, generating over 50 million posts in the first 24 hours alone. Now, let's talk numbers that will blow your mind. Currently, the world spends approximately $2.4 trillion annually on military expenditure. That's about 2.2% of global GDP. To put this in perspective, that's enough money to end extreme poverty worldwide three times over, or provide clean water access to every human on the planet for the next century. With world peace declared, this massive financial pipeline would suddenly need new destinations. Imagine, former weapons factories retrofitting their assembly lines to produce solar panels and wind turbines. Military research facilities pivoting from developing stealth bombers to designing spacecraft for Mars colonization. The Pentagon's annual budget of $850 billion redirected toward climate change mitigation, disease eradication, and space exploration. But here's the fascinating part. This transition wouldn't happen overnight. It would take approximately 5 to 10 years to fully retrain military personnel and convert defense infrastructure. During this period, we'd likely see the largest job retraining program in human history. Here's something most people don't consider. How would the human psyche adapt to a world without conflict? Psychologists estimate that the average person is exposed to over 300 conflict-related news stories per month. Suddenly removing this constant stream of stress-inducing information would have profound effects on global mental health. Studies suggest that within just six months, we'd see a 25% reduction in anxiety-related disorders worldwide. Sleep quality would improve as people no longer subconsciously worry about distant wars or potential threats. But there's a paradox here. Humans have evolved with conflict as a driving force for innovation and social bonding. Without external threats, we'd need to find new sources of challenge and purpose. This is where science fiction becomes science fact. Historians point to periods of relative peace as times of greatest artistic and scientific flourishing. The Renaissance, the Islamic Golden Age, the Pax Romana, all occurred during extended peaceful periods. With world peace, the concept of technological secrecy would become obsolete almost overnight. Think about it. No more classified research. No more export restrictions on advanced technology. No more cyber warfare. The collective human knowledge base would suddenly become, well, actually collective. This would accelerate technological progress exponentially. Computer scientists from Silicon Valley could collaborate freely with researchers in Moscow, Beijing, and Tel Aviv. 
medical researchers could share data without worrying about national security implications. Conservative estimates suggest this open collaboration could advance human technology by 50 to 100 years within just two decades. We're talking about potential breakthroughs in fusion energy becoming commercially viable by 2035 instead of 2070. Quantum computing networks connecting every major city by 2030. And perhaps most exciting, a unified global effort to develop interstellar travel technology. Here's where world peace becomes humanity's ultimate environmental policy. Military operations are among the world's largest polluters. The U.S. military alone produces more greenhouse gas emissions than 140 countries combined. With global demilitarization, we'd immediately see a significant reduction in carbon emissions. But the real environmental revolution would come from redirected resources. Imagine the world's best engineers, previously designing fighter jets, now focusing exclusively on carbon capture technology and renewable energy systems. Within five years, we could see massive reforestation projects covering areas the size of entire countries, ocean cleanup operations using converted naval fleets, and atmospheric engineering projects that seemed like pure science fiction just years before. The Amazon rainforest could be fully restored within 15 years, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch could be eliminated within a decade. We might even see the first successful large-scale atmospheric carbon removal programs. But wait, world peace doesn't mean the end of all human challenges? In fact, it might create entirely new categories of problems we've never had to consider. Without external conflicts to unite against, internal social divisions might actually intensify. Political scientists call this the common enemy paradox. Humans often need something to oppose in order to cooperate. We'd also face what philosophers term the meaning crisis. For thousands of years, human societies have organized around concepts of defense, victory, and survival. Without these driving forces, we'd need to completely reinvent our social structures and individual purposes. Then there are the practical challenges. What do you do with 65 million people currently employed in defense-related industries? How do you prevent the peaceful world from becoming, well, boring? Interestingly, this might drive humanity toward our next great adventure, becoming a multi-planetary species. Mars colonization could become the new moonshot project that unites global efforts and provides that essential sense of challenge and purpose. Now for the science fiction element that makes this scenario truly mind-bending. What if world peace wasn't achieved through human diplomacy, but through contact with an extraterrestrial intelligence? This isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. It's actually a well-studied scenario in astrobiology and political science. The alien contact paradigm suggests that discovering we're not alone in the universe would instantly make human conflict seem trivial. Suddenly, we wouldn't be Americans, Russians, or Chinese. We'd simply be humans united by our shared planetary origin. This external perspective shift could trigger what psychologists call species-level consciousness, where humanity begins thinking and acting as a single unified civilization. The implications are staggering. Unified global governance within a generation, massive space exploration programs, and perhaps most importantly, the development of interstellar communication capabilities. So what would daily life actually look like in this peaceful world? Your morning commute would pass through neighborhoods that were once considered rough, but are now thriving cultural districts thanks to massive urban renewal projects. Your job might involve working on fusion reactor designs, vertical farming systems, or planning the first permanent lunar settlements. Children would grow up never knowing what a military base looks like or what an air raid siren sounds like. History classes would teach about the age of conflicts as a distant, almost mythological period. Global travel would be frictionless. No visa restrictions, no border guards, no security checkpoints. 
The TSA would be a historical footnote. Passport control would exist only in museums. Entertainment would change too. Action movies would need entirely new sources of conflict. Sports might become even more important as humanity's outlet for competitive instincts. We might even see the emergence of new sports designed specifically for our peaceful world. But here's where our thought experiment gets really interesting. The consequences nobody saw coming. Without the constant threat of conflict, human evolution might actually slow down in some unexpected ways. Stress responses that helped our ancestors survive might begin to atrophy over generations. We might literally become a gentler species. On the flip side, intellectual evolution could accelerate dramatically. With unlimited access to global educational resources and no barriers to knowledge sharing, the average human IQ could increase by 10 to 15 points within just two generations. There's also the peace dividend paradox. Countries that previously spent heavily on defense might find themselves so prosperous that inequality actually increases in the short term. The transition period could create temporary social instability, the ironic result of achieving peace. And here's a mind bender. We might discover that some of our greatest innovations only occurred because of conflict pressures. The internet, GPS, and countless medical advances were all military spin-offs. Without war-driving innovation, we might need to artificially create challenges to maintain our technological progress. World peace would force humanity to confront some of our deepest philosophical questions. What is the purpose of human existence without struggle? How do we maintain individual identity within species-wide unity? And perhaps most challenging, how do we prevent utopia from becoming dystopia? Religious and spiritual traditions would undergo massive transformations. Concepts of good versus evil, salvation through suffering, and divine justice would need complete reinterpretation. We might see the emergence of entirely new philosophical schools focused on post-conflict consciousness and planetary ethics. Universities might establish departments of peace studies not as theoretical exercises, but as practical guides for managing our new reality. The question of free will would become particularly relevant. In a world without external threats, would humans choose conflict anyway? Or would we prove that cooperation is our natural state when survival isn't at stake? With world peace achieved, humanity's gaze would inevitably turn upward. Space exploration would transform from a luxury pursued by wealthy nations to humanity's primary collective endeavor. The combined annual space budgets of all nations currently total about $90 billion. With military budgets redirected, this could easily increase to over $500 billion annually. This level of investment would make possible permanent lunar settlements by 2035. Crewed Mars missions launching every two years starting in 2030, and serious development of interstellar probe programs targeting nearby star systems. But here's the really exciting part. Space exploration might become humanity's new source of healthy competition. Instead of competing through warfare, nations might compete to establish the most successful off-world colonies or make the most significant scientific discoveries. The first children born on Mars might grow up never knowing that their parents' planet was once divided by artificial borders and ancient hatreds. To them, Earthling wouldn't be a science fiction term. It would just be what they called their relatives back home. Now for the million dollar question, is any of this actually possible? Historically, periods of global peace have been rare and brief. The closest we've come was the period between 1815 and 1914, known as the Long Peace, which ironically ended with World War I. Political scientists identify several prerequisites for lasting global peace. Economic interdependence so deep that war becomes economically impossible. Democratic governance systems that make leaders accountable to peace-preferring populations and shared existential challenges that require cooperation to solve. Interestingly, we're closer to these conditions than ever before in human history. 
Global trade makes nations economically dependent on each other. Democratic ideals are spreading worldwide, and challenges like climate change and potential asteroid impacts require international cooperation. Some futurists argue that artificial intelligence might make war obsolete by making deception and surprise attacks impossible. If every military movement is instantly detected and analyzed, the element of surprise, crucial to successful warfare, disappears entirely. So here's the thought experiment I'll leave you with. If world peace was declared tomorrow, what would you personally do with your life? Would you become an artist, finally free from economic anxiety about basic survival? Would you become an explorer, helping to map the moons of Jupiter? Would you become a teacher, helping to raise the first generation of humans who've never known war? The beauty of this scenario isn't just in imagining a better world, it's in recognizing that many of these changes are already possible. We don't actually need to wait for a magical declaration of world peace to start solving problems through cooperation instead of competition. Every time we choose collaboration over conflict, every time we share knowledge instead of hoarding it, every time we extend trust instead of building walls, we're creating a small piece of that peaceful world. Maybe world peace isn't something that gets declared by governments. Maybe it's something that gets built one human connection at a time until one day we look around and realize we've been living in that better world all along. The future is still unwritten. And that might be the most hopeful thought of all.